And I made a video a few days ago saying, hey, Bahia, talking about how Africa is not my home, okay? There are, there's this idea that Africa is the motherland, which I don't ascribe to, okay? First of all, I feel like all land is sacred on the planet, okay? I really don't believe in saying that one part of the earth is more sacred than the other, but if I had to say, I would say that the Americas is the motherland, okay? So, I have a question for you. How many white people do you think we have in the Gambia? And how many African Americans do we, do you think uh, we have in Gambia? You know, we have many white people and they own very huge lands in the Gambia. We also have black Americans who have worked so hard to earn money and buy their lands. But, there is a twist in the tale here. You know, Africans are complaining that people are taking their resources. And the people that Africans are saying that they are taking their resources, Africans are pointing at the black Americans. But they are keeping a blind eye to the white people. You see, Africans of, uh, from the Gambia are targeting African women, particularly women. And they are fighting them on the allegations or, uh, or on the point of they are st stealing what's ours. The idea is they are stealing what's ours. Now, who's really taking something from Africans? Is it the African-American who is taking from the African? Or is it the white person who is taking from the African? The white person who have acquired land illegally? Because we have them here in Kenya. We have white people who have acquired land illegally. If Africans want to fight a problem, not a person, a problem, they should fight the problem from where it is. We should not be puppets to the imperialist ideas. Imperialist ideas is to bring all forms of division between the people of African descent. You see, they come and they start conflict and then they point, when the Africa is looking, they point, at the black, they, they point to the black Americans. It is them. So Africans, as we are busy fighting the, uh, the African Americans, these people are busy exploiting because they are here to divert our attention as we take. I think it shouldn't happen at all. This one is not, uh, is, is not the case. And I made a video a few days ago saying, hey, Bahia, talking about how Africa is not my home, okay? There are, there's this idea that Africa is the motherland, which I don't ascribe to, okay? First of all, I feel like all land is sacred on the planet, okay? I really don't believe in saying that one part of the earth is more sacred than the other. But if I had to say, I would say that the Americas is the motherland, okay? Uh, and I have a whole, I could give a whole lecture on that, okay? Um, but there's, a, and there's been, you know, a whole lot of black Americans um, moving to Africa, to Ghana and stuff. And you have this, or different African countries, and you have this whole year of the return, which I have been saying was a scam, okay? Where Ghana is saying, come back home. And first of all, that's not our home, Okay. Um, I don't feel like I look like them, and I don't feel like our foods are alike. I, I'm not even, you know, West African food doesn't even look appetizing to me, and I don't mean any offense, I'm just saying it doesn't. Um, and their culture is completely different. Like, I remember when I was um, fresh out of college, my first boyfriend out of college was Nigerian. And I remember my dad told me, to read the book Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. He said the way that they relate and deal with their family members is completely different than us, right? And I didn't understand that then, but just in me dealing with him, I, there were things, and I can't remember now because that was like 20 years ago, but I just remember noticing things that were very different with how they deal with their family and how we deal with ours. So there's huge cultural differences, okay? And so to say that Africa is your home when we have no connection to it, okay? Don't speak the language, okay? In Africa, people are speaking indigenous languages. Of course, they speak a European language because they were colonized, but they are usually speaking several African um, languages that you don't speak. Um, they do not see us as their, their brother or sister, which black Americans are completely naive about that. And I've, I've been aware of that because my dad, another thing about me, I was raised by Pan-Africanists, okay? And um, I don't, I think there's an issue with that as well, but let me just say, I was raised by black scholars, you know, who are Pan-Africanists, and my dad was heavily involved in the civil rights movement. He was a part of the organization that strategically put the Black Panthers together. It's an organization called RAM, Revolutionary Action Movement. He was actually one of the founding members. And um, my dad said in the 60s, he knew a lot of black Americans that moved to Africa, and every single last one of them came back because it was not what they thought. 
okay? He even knew um, a woman who moved to Africa to be a wife of, you know, a lot of African men be having a compound with a bunch of wives. And she moved there for that. And when she came back to America, she never wanted to be anybody's wife again, okay? That's how traumatized she was. Now, this whole idea of, like, a strong black woman, I think that that fits, you know, or this outspoken strong black woman, I think that fits black American women. I think many of the women, the black women in the diaspora, are very mute and quiet and just accept the injustices and the abuse from men, okay? And just being subordinate. So... These and this is the thing too. When you travel again, it's not where you're from; it's where you're at. So this is the reason why for me, like, I have a love-hate relationship with traveling internationally. Okay, every time I leave the country, I'm glad to come back to America. Okay, there's no country that I've been to that I said I want to live in this country over America. I don't. Okay, every country has its pros and cons. I will take America's pros. I mean, America's cons over other countries. Like people complain about the police in America. The police are a whole lot more corrupt in these other countries, okay? More corrupt in Jamaica, more corrupt in Russia, more corrupt in, in African countries, okay? The Nigerian police are the most corrupt police in the world. Do you think that them protesting or doing anything is going to change shit? No, it's not. Because already their government is super corrupt. And there's corrupt in every government, corruption in every government. Every government has some corruption, but the levels, there's levels to it. And when you travel internationally, you as a foreigner, it's like, you're always going to be guilty, okay? No one's going to try to protect you. Unlike America, where America protects people who are not even legal citizens, America protects people who ain't even supposed to be here and been here forever, America takes people who are coming here illegally and gives them housing and credit cards and shit they won't give their U.S. citizens, right? Yeah, someone said you basically have to pay every officer you pass by in Nigeria. I heard the same thing was true in Ghana, okay? I know I was trying to be, I was bribed in Mexico, um, never paid them, but they tried to get me to. But I heard that in Ghana, you have to pay every police officer when they pull you over no matter what. That level of corruption is worse to me. I've never had to pay a cop in, in America, and I don't know anybody that has. So that's why when people were having this whole argument in America about um, Black Lives Matter, to me, I'm like, it's bigger than that. Police brutality is a worldwide issue. It's not an American issue, and it's not just a black issue. It's, just, it's not just a white cop and a black people issue. There's black cops and black people. It's... You know, but it's also the whole entire world has a, police, a, a corruption issue with the police. It's not, that's not unique to America. And I see people online, you know, trying to attack uh, black Americans who, you know, want to be in America. And they're like, oh, you want to be there and the police don't? The police don't even like you and you have to worry about being black? First of all, I don't worry about being black, okay? I don't. And, yeah, the police can be an issue here, but they can be way worse. Everybody else's jails are worse, okay? Everybody else's police are worse, all right? And this, you know, looking at Africa, because I was raised around black scholars and tons of books in my house, most people whose houses I go to, they don't even have books, okay? So when you actually, you know, are studying culture and stuff, you understand that Africans, they don't, this whole idea that we're all black and united and because you're black, you're my sister, and because you so-called look like me, when honestly, I don't feel like people in Ghana look like me, so what does that even mean, right? But... People that have this mindset and they think that, you know, we're all united and we all should care for each other, look out for each other, and let me leave America and go move to Africa where everybody's black and this is my utopia is delusional because they don't look at us like brothers and sisters. They look at us like foreigners from a foreign land, period, okay? And if you're a light-skinned black person, they usually look at you like you're white, okay? So you could be over here saying you're black, you're black, you're black. You're light-skinned. You go over there. They don't see you as black at all. They call you white. A lot of times they do that in Jamaica as well, Okay? So, the thing is, is that if you go on YouTube, and I'll post some of the videos below on my YouTube channel, but there are a few channels, okay, of um, people who, black Americans who moved to Africa who have YouTube channels talking about these women being deleted, okay, in the Gambia. And one woman, she's from New York, because I see a lot of these people are from California, and I feel like California people are super hippy-dippy and naive, okay? Um... But there's one woman who had moved from New York, right? And you, you could tell all of her New York accent. Um, and, um, well, let me just say racism is, is a social construct, and I'm going to do another video about that because what people consider black in America is not, is not, other countries may not consider that black, okay? 
And there are people in America who will say, I'm 100% black, I'm 100% black, I'm not mixed with anything. But you clearly are. It's just that in America, you don't claim it. You just say you're black. You ignore that. But other countries will. So like in Brazil, if you look up what percentage of Brazilians are black, you'll find that most of them aren't black. They're, they're mixed blood. So Brazilians really use that mixed uh, mixed blood category, whereas black Americans, I mean, not just black, Americans don't. Americans say you're white or you're black. When most people in America are mixed, whether you identify as black or whether you identify as white, most people are mixed, okay? We just don't acknowledge that. We only acknowledge it in America if you have one parent, two parents who claim to be two different things, then people will say you're mixed, but most of us are. Um, but, because Africans are very much by their tribes, so you from two different tribes, you mix it in, you know what I'm saying? So, the whole year of the return, I felt like it was a scam. I said, I don't believe that people in Ghana care about us. I think they want our American money. I think they want us to come there with our American money, okay? I have zero desire to go visit a slave castle. For what? Okay, for what? Why? What's the point? I went to Senegal. I didn't go see that. First of all, I hated Senegal. I'm sorry, right? But... I don't like, as you know, when traveling, when I've been to many countries, they didn't do this in, in Colombia, which I appreciate them for, and I don't believe this happened in Mexico. But so many countries that I've gone to, they change the price when they realize that you're American, okay? They realize, oh, you're from America? Oh, we're going to up the rates, and we're going to change. Every, everybody's trying to scam you. Everybody's trying to take your money. That's why I love countries that have Uber, okay? Because then the cab driver can't be, can't be um, trying to scam you. You pay with the app. And that's it. If you don't have that, they're going to try to change the price, even when you negotiate prices. I mean, I talk about it in my video when I went to uh, Dakar. Like, when I got to the airport, I was so scared because I paid the man what I agreed to pay him. And then he tried to act like I didn't give him enough, and he was following me around. And I thought, if this man lies on me and tells the police or somebody that I didn't pay him, I would be the one in trouble because I'm a foreigner. That's how it works, okay? That's why traveling out of the country can scare me, okay? So... Um, a lot of people are making the comments that, because there's, there's a lot of older white women who are moving to, the, I don't know if the white women are moving to the Gambia, but there's a lot of older white women going to the Gambia um, to have sex with young black men, which I don't judge that, whatever. But I saw a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, they're not doing that to the white people that go there, you know, they're not treating the white people like that. I constantly saw those statements. And I believe that, because one of my experiences in studying um, and one thing, one difference between black Americans and blacks in Africa and the Caribbean is that black Americans, we don't suck up to white people, okay? We don't. I have seen Africans and Caribbeans put white people, mediocre white people, on a pedestal who do not belong to be there, who do not deserve to be there, okay? Now, well, black Americans, if you are playing, if you're in New Orleans playing, in, playing music with some of the best musicians in New Orleans, the only way a white person will be there, if a white person is there, that's because they are just as good. They can play their asses off. Black Americans do not take mediocre white people and put them in a, in a, on a pedestal. Caribbeans do it and Africans do it. Okay, I've seen it constantly and it disgusts me. All right, I've seen, when I studied Congolese dance, um, and I think one of the teachers I studied with is on this live, but she's from Brazil and Guyana. She dances, she looks... You know, she looks just like somebody from the Congo or West Africa. She dances just like them, okay, on the same level. But yet, I go to this Congolese dance camp in Hawaii, okay, and all I see is a bunch of white girls. And they really want, they were, there was like four white black people at this camp and a bunch of white people. And they were saying sarcastic things to the black Americans, not wanting to teach us certain things. But then here you go, see them over here with all these white girls, teaching them all these sacred songs and all this stuff. And you see this white uh, group that had a Congolese dance company in Northern California, all white people that could not dance at all. Okay, California is too hippy-dippy too, okay? They couldn't dance at all because that kind of company would never exist in New York. And this Congolese man is taking this, this white dude who can't even, he, has two, he can't even two-step on beat. Taking him to the Congo as an understudy. Up these white people ass, right? But then they were trying to, you know, ha you know, block my teacher, uh, you know, um, who's teaching Congolese dance because she's not from the Congo. And honestly, you can't see, you can't even find Congolese dance in America, okay? There's like a couple of classes in New York City. There's a, 
uh, then there's a family in the Bay Area, the Malonga family. They basically have a monopoly on it, and some of them are in Michigan, like Ann Arbor, Detroit, Michigan area, and from that same Malonga family. But that's it. You're not going to find Congolese dance in Atlanta. You're not going to find it in Chicago. You're not going to find it in D.C., Baltimore, Miami, or Philly. You're not going to find it in L.A. You're not going to find it in Texas. You're going to find it in the Bay Area, and you're going to find it in New York City, and a little bit in Michigan. Okay? But what you do find everywhere is West African dance, which is very generic to the djembe and has nothing to do with um, black dance in the Americas. The Congo does, right? But they, they gatekeep that. They don't want us to learn anything about that, okay? Um, but yet, black people over here be looking at Africa, worshipping them, putting them on a pedestal. Oh, that's the motherland. Oh, those are my brothers and sisters. And oh, let me go over there so I can really be free. It's so naive, okay? It's so naive. So, there's a lot of, I, I, so there's one woman um, who I follow, and I'm going to post her Instagram page, her YouTube page below. Because she moved to Ghana, married a Ghanaian man and has a farm. And when I first discovered her page, I thought to myself, you don't need to move to Ghana to be a farmer. Like, America has beautiful farmland. Honestly and truly, the farmland in America is more beautiful to me. When I see stuff, when I went to, Senegal is like a desert. But when I see people in Nigeria and Ghana, and I always look at the backgrounds, it does not, I barely see any trees, okay? It's dusty. The soil does not look as fertile. It's not as lush. Is what it looks like if you look at a lot of places in North America. I mean, New York State is lush with some of the best soil. Okay? But there's many states in America. Also, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is the lushest place I've ever been. Okay? Um, Mexico, Colombia. All those places are so... Brazil. Okay? Cuba. All right? So those places are lush. Okay? Big the, the trees in Cuba, I never saw trees like that. Okay, when I look at people in West Africa, in Nigeria, and Ghana, and so, it doesn't look like that. So to me, I'm like, why would you leave this beautiful land in the Americas and move over there to be a farmer? Okay, that's number one. So this woman, like, she's like, you know, married this Ghanaian man. And I'm thinking, how can you trust that this Ghanaian man married you? Because he really, like, to me, I wouldn't trust that. When I went to Cuba, every man was trying to marry me. Okay. I don't trust that. Cubans can't leave the damn island. Do you think that they really want to marry you? Because no, they're trying to find a way to get up out of there. I want us to talk about a situation that is happening in uh, West Africa. I find this very important for the African Americans moving back to the continent. Yes, uh, this journey of moving back to the continent has been successful to some African Americans and even as we are speaking right now, an African American might be on a plane moving to Africa. Wow, that's good. And we encourage that a lot. We encourage African Americans to come to the wa to the land where uh, they uh, they once belonged. Africa is where they came from, you know. But there's another side of this story that um, is not really told by many. Uh, we are not told that African Americans at times can suffer victims to the Africans. Yeah, African Americans can suffer victims to the Africans. It means that even here in Africa. Uh, many African Americans are trying to escape um, the police brutality, uh, the harassment, uh, the racism uh, in uh, USA moving to Africa. But uh, some Africans are really not good, and um, I think it's important we address this issue. So we are going to dive into this video where this African American woman uh, is warning. It's kind of a warning. Uh, we should take it. We should watch this video with an open mindset. You know, she is not giving any African country a bad name, but she is speaking of the things which are happening. And to be specific, I've spoken. I've spoken of this country before. I'm speaking of the country in West Africa. Uh, it's called uh, the Gambia. The Gambia is a very notorious an Afri African country. It's known for the beach boys and the old uh, British ladies, British uh, grannies. They are grannies, yes. Uh, Gambia has been told to have a very low life expectancy. There's a high crime rate. And these are not words from my mouth. These are words that are outside there on the internet. People are complaining, people are saying this and that. So without further ado, I want us to dive into this video. Listen to what the sister has to say 
and then I'll give you my thoughts towards the end of the video where I will attempt to give you a solution uh, to this problem. I know you might not solve your problem 100% but haba na haba hujaza kibaba. Here is my thought towards uh, what the sister said. Now, um, here is what you need to consider as an African American who wants to move back to the continent or who is already in the continent. Now, um, the plight of black Americans uh, facing targeted violence in the Gambia and other African countries is a disturbing reality that demands attention and understanding. While Africa is always portrayed as a continent of solidarity and unity among the people of African descent, the experiences of black Americans in certain African nations is revealing a complex and trouble, troubling dynamic, you know? Now, uh, as I said, we are going to explore the root causes of targeted violence against black Americans in Gambia and other African countries and examine the historical, social and economic factors contributing to this phenomenon. As always, we need to have a little bit of history of why this is happening. Now, the first one is the historical context. To understand the contemporary challenges faced by black Americans in the Gambia and other African nations, it is essential to examine the historical context of the African diaspora. The transatlantic slave trade forcibly displaced millions of Africans to the Americas, resulting in the formation of distinct African diasporic communities, including black Americans. Centuries of slavery, colonialism, and systemic racism have deeply influenced the socio-economic status and identity of black Americans, shaping their relationship with Africa and its native population. The post-colonial reality is what follows. Now, following the end of the colonial rule in Africa, many nations on the continent grappled with the legacy of colonialism and sought to assert their independence and national identity. However, the process of decolonization was often fraught with the challenges, including ethnic tensions, which is very, very common. In Africa, we have a lot of tribalism which is uh, the ethnic tensions. We have political instability during elections and uh, economic disparities, you know. In this post-colonial context, black Americans returning to Africa in search of their roots or seeking opportunities often encounter hostility and discrimination from native population. Remember, this is not everyone who is practicing this. It's a number of people who are practicing this, but it's being practiced on people who are of African descent and uh, the message needs to get out, the things need to be told as it is, you know. Now the next one would be economic disparities. Economic disparities play a significant role in exacerbating <laughs> tensions between uh, black Americans and native Africans in uh, certain African countries, you know. The influx of African tourist investors or uh, repatriates may, perceived, may be perceived as a competition for scarce resources or economic opportunities, leading to resentments and, hostile, uh, and hostility from local communities. Some, some, um, some Africans might think uh, black Americans are coming to, to take away from them. Some Africans might think of these. Uh, these are Africans who have uh, the scarcity mindset. Africa is so big. Africa is so big. Nobody can come and grab your land, you grab your food and grab your whatever, no. Um, Africa is so big, you know, and this mindset, people have to do away with it. The same mindset that if an African-American buys land in Gambia, the African, uh, the African American ha always has to be cautious because the African thinks that he's come to stolen their land. Come on, he just bought it. You are willing to sell and he bought it. It's his, by law it is his. I don't know why you should be feeling angry because you sold what's yours. You sold it. He didn't come and tell you, um, sell for me your land. You decided to sell your land on yourself. It is a willful thing, not a forceful thing, you know. Now, uh, the influx of black American tourists, investors or repatriates may be perceived as a competition for scarce resources or economic opportunities, leading to resentment and hostility from local communities. Moreover, disparities in wealth and access to resource can create power imbalances that further marginalize black Americans and make them vulnerable to violence and exploitation. This is what we are trying to avoid. This is what the sister was trying to avoid. 
not to happen, you know. Um, cultural identity and belonging is also a challenge that uh, African Americans are facing or might face uh, in their assimilation to Africa, you know. The issue of cultural identity and belonging also contributes to the challenges faced by, by black Americans in the Gambia and other African nations. While black Americans may share a common African heritage with the native population, their distinct cultural upbringing and experiences of racism in the USA often set them apart. This cultural disconnect can fuel mistrust and misunderstanding between black Americans and native Africans, leading to tensions and conflict. This is another issue that is causing what we are having in Gambia, you know. Now, how about addressing this issue, addressing the problem that's happening? Okay, addressing the targeted violence against black Americans in the Gambia and other African countries require a multifaceted approach that addresses the root causes of discrimination promoting dialogue, understanding, and reconciliation. This includes efforts to combat systemic racism. Yes, there is, a, there is, reverse, there is reverse racism. As, uh, as, as I heard in South Africa, we also have reverse apartheid. There is reverse racism in Kenya. Some Africans might be racist to black Americans, though it's very rare. I've never seen such, but it might be. Uh, there is always a possibility to, to give, there is always uh, probability to anything, you know. Now, um, uh, this one can be used to combat systemic racism, it can be used to promote economic development and social justice, you know. It can also be used uh, to foster cultural exchange and collaboration between black Americans and native African communities. Education and awareness can be used in raising initiatives which are also crucial in challenging stereotypes and promoting empathy and solidarity among people of African descent. Yes, when this is followed and this one is practiced, it's, uh, it's a good thing, you know. The process of assimilating is not something of one day or two days. It's a process of adaptation. Adaptation occurs with the time. It's a function of time. The more you go through things, the more you adapt, the more you are able to survive through that time and space, you know. Now, uh, how about we conclude uh, what the sister said uh, together with uh, what I realized from everything she said. Uh, my realization was that the targeted violence against black Americans in the Gambia and other African nations is a complex issue which is rooted in historical, social and economic factors. Understanding the dynamics underlying this phenomenon is essential for promoting effective strategies to address discrimination and promote unity and reconciliation among people of African descent. By acknowledging the shared heritage and experiences of black Americans and native Africans, we can work together towards building a more inclusive and equitable future for all. Africa is so big, we can all coexist in this huge landmass. This is where you came, this is where you came from. I know it's, uh, it's like 400 years ago, 400 years ago, when the first slave ship left the shores of Ghana uh, to the shores of the Americas, a place called Virginia. Um, when the first slave ship reached there, there is when we first had the first black Americans. So. Coming back home, Nana Kufo Ado, President William Samoy Ruto, President of Rwanda Kagame, we have Ibrahim Traore. These are all voices that are trying to come together and fight for the liberation of the black people. And so, if you are a black person, try and be nice to other black people, even if you are not, even if you don't share the same same uh, community or uh, tribe. We are one people, and we deserve to be treated equally. So that's the end of the video. If you liked uh, the video, kindly give it a super thanks. If you like the video, again, uh, become a member of my Patreon. Uh, you can always uh, support me on Patreon. Uh, become a channel member and like the video. Subscribe, kindly subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video where we will have matters of Africa addressed the African way. See you in the next video.